Welcome to Premath. In this video, we have got these uh, three chords uh, A, D, C, D, and uh, B, C fully confined uh, in a semicircle with the center E, as you can see in this uh, diagram such that uh, these chords A, D and C, D are equal in length and each of them is uh, 30 units whereas uh, this chord B, C is uh, 14 and now our task is uh, to calculate the radius uh, of this uh, semicircle. Please don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe. Please keep in mind that this figure may not be 100% true to the scale. Let's go ahead and get started. And here's our very first step. Uh, I have drawn some auxiliary lines uh, ED and EC by connecting uh, the center E with these uh, points uh, C and uh, D. And now we can see that this uh, AE, EB, this uh, ED and uh, EC are the radii of this uh, semicircle. Let me go ahead and represent uh, the radius as lowercase r. This is going to be lowercase r lowercase r and uh, lowercase r as well and here's our next step let's focus on these uh, two triangles uh, this uh, yellow shaded uh, triangle uh, ade and this another green shaded triangle uh, dec and we can see that these uh, two triangles uh, triangle ade and the other triangle uh, dec are uh, congruent uh, triangles according to side uh, side uh, side uh, congruency theorem because we can see that this uh, side length uh, equal to this uh, side length. This uh, side length is uh, our radius. This side length is our radius uh, as well. And uh, this uh, side length uh, is uh, in common. So therefore we conclude that uh, this uh, angle is going to be congruent uh, to this uh, angle. If I call this angle as uh, X, then this angle is going to be X uh, as well. And here's our next step. Uh, I have connected uh, this point A with this uh, point uh, C and we got this uh, line uh, AC. And now let's recall the Thales uh, theorem. According to this theorem, uh, if uh, A, B and C are uh, distinct point on the circle where the line AB is the diameter, then the angle uh, ACB is going to be a right uh, angle. As you can see in this uh, diagram, we got uh, these uh, three distinct uh, points A, B and uh, C on the circle and this uh, A, B is the diameter of this uh, semicircle. So no wonder this angle uh, A, C, B is our 90 degree angle. And in this uh, next step let's focus on this uh, triangle uh, A, D, C that is an isosceles uh, triangle since this side length uh, equal to this side uh, length. And now let's recall the perpendicular bisector theorem. If a radius of a circle is perpendicular to a chord, then the radius uh, bisects the chord. We can see that this uh, AC is uh, our chord and this uh, DE is the radius. Then we can see that this uh, segment AF is equal to this segment FC. And moreover, this angle is uh, 90 degrees. And here's our next step. Let's focus on this uh, right triangle uh, AFE and another uh, bigger uh, right triangle uh, ACB. And now we can see that these uh, two right triangle uh, AFE and ACB are uh, similar uh, triangles according to angle uh, angle similarity theorem. So therefore we are going to have a proportion. Let me go ahead and write down uh, the ratio of uh, EF and AE. Let me write down uh, EF divided by AE is going to be equal to the ratio of uh, BC and this uh, AB. Let me go ahead and write down uh, BC divided by AB. And now we can see our AE length is uh, lowercase uh, r radius. This length uh, BC is uh, 14. And finally this length uh, AB is just simply the diameter of this semicircle r plus r is going to give us uh, 2r. So therefore I can write uh, ef divided by lowercase r equals to 14 divided by 2 times r. Now let's go ahead and multiply both sides by r to isolate uh, ef and here we can see this r cancelled with this r. 
this R cancels with this uh, R. So therefore our EF length uh, turns out to be 7 units. So thus our this uh, side uh, EF uh, turns out to be 7 units. And now let's make an observation. We can see that this uh, whole uh, length uh, is uh, radius uh, R. This uh, length uh, EF is uh, 7. So therefore uh, this uh, length uh, FD is going to be R minus uh, 7. And now let's focus on this uh, right triangle uh, DFC whose uh, this uh, side length uh, is uh, 30 and this side length is uh, R minus uh, 7. And now let's assume that this uh, side length uh, FC is going to be lowercase uh, h and we are going to use the Pythagorean theorem on this triangle. And here's our Pythagorean theorem a square plus b square equal to c square. Let me go ahead and call this uh, longest leg as our side uh, c. I'm going to call uh, this side uh, lowercase uh, a and this uh, lowercase b. So let's go ahead and fill in the blanks in this uh, Pythagorean uh, formula. a in our case is uh, h. So this become h square plus uh, b is uh, r minus 7 whole square equal to c in our case is 30 whole square. And now let's recall this uh, famous identity a minus b whole square could be written as uh, a square minus 2ab plus b square. We are going to apply it on this uh, binomial. So therefore the left hand side is going to be h square. Let's take care of this square that is going to give us uh, r square minus uh, 14r plus uh, 49 equal to 30 square is 900. Now let's go ahead and move this uh, r square negative 14 r and this uh, 49 on the right hand side as you can see in this uh, next step. Now let's go ahead and combine these uh, constants as you can see in this uh, next step. Let me go ahead and call this our equation uh, number one and now let's focus on another right triangle uh, EFC whose uh, side lengths are uh, 7, lowercase h and uh, radius r. And we are going to use the Pythagorean theorem on this uh, triangle again. So let's go ahead and fill in the blanks in this uh, Pythagorean formula. a square in our case uh, is going to be h square plus uh, b is uh, 7 whole square equal to our longest leg c is uh, r square. So let's simplify. So h square plus 49 equal to r square. Let's move this 49 on the right hand side. As you can see in this next step, let me label this equation as equation number 2. And now let's go ahead and compare these equations 1 and 2 since the left hand sides are the same. So we can equate the right hand sides as well. So therefore I can write over here r square minus 49 equals to 851 minus r square plus 14r. Now let me go ahead and move everything on the left hand side. As you can see in this next step, let's go ahead and combine the like terms. As you can see in this uh, next step and we can see that uh, all these terms are divisible by 2. So let me go ahead and divide each and every term uh, by 2 across the board. So therefore we are going to have uh, r square minus uh, 7 r minus uh, 450 equal to 0. And now we can see that this is our quadratic equation and we are going to solve for r by grouping uh, and factoring. Now we can see that this uh, 450 could be factored into 25 times uh, 18. And if we subtract uh, these uh, two numbers, we are going to get uh, this number 7 in the middle. So therefore, I'm going to tweak uh, this uh, middle term. Uh, negative 7r could be written as uh, negative 25r plus uh, 18r. As you can see in this uh, next step and here we can see that r is in common between first two terms and uh, 18 is in common between last two terms. So therefore we are going to factor out r outside r minus uh, 25 and plus 18 factored out uh, side. So we got r minus uh, 25 equal to 
0 and now we can see r minus 25 and r minus 25 they are in common so therefore I can write uh, r minus uh, 25 times r plus uh, 18 equal to 0 now let me go ahead and separate them so I can write r minus uh, 25 equal to 0 the other one is uh, r plus 18 equal to 0 as well and for this uh, first equation r is going to be positive 25 and for this uh, second equation r is going to be negative 18 and we know that radius cannot be negative so therefore we are going to reject uh, this uh, negative value and we are going to accept uh, r equals to 25 uh, units so thus the radius uh, turns out to be 25 uh, units thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more exciting videos bye